elbow dislocation in adults. There are some important points related to elbow dislocation in adults. We're going to start with the terrible triad. We need to recognize the terrible triad. So what is the terrible triad? Number one, elbow dislocation. Number two, radial head fracture. Number three, coronoid fracture. Terrible triad is not a simple elbow dislocation. It is a complex elbow dislocation. This is an example of terrible triad fracture dislocation of the elbow. In addition to all the three injuries, there is always a tear of the lateral ulnar collateral ligament. The treatment usually is reduction and splinting of the elbow. That cannot be the definitive treatment. That's the initial treatment. If no surgery, you're going to have recurrent dislocation of the elbow. You need to do surgery for reduction and fixation of the fractures and also in order to restore the elbow stability. This injury is unstable. Simple reduction and displinting is not going to work for that injury. You got to recognize the terrible triad and it means surgery. Then we'll go into the types and classification of elbow dislocation. There are multiple types of elbow dislocation based on the position of the olecranon relative to the humerus. The most common type is the posterolateral type. There are two basic types of elbow dislocation, simple and complex. The simple, no fracture seen, it is usually a ligamentous injury. Complex, the injury will have associated fractures in addition to the ligamentous injury. With any elbow dislocation, you need to check the shoulder and the rest for injuries and fractures because it can occur in up to 15%. When you have a simple dislocation of the elbow, you need to reduce it and then check the range of stability of the elbow. If you find the elbow stable with range of motion, then you will do a short period of immobilization with posterior splint for approximately one week with the elbow in about 90 degrees of flexion. Then start active range of motion of the elbow. Recurrence of the dislocation is rare. It is less than 1%. If you keep the elbow immobilized more than three weeks, there will be severe stiffness of the elbow. When do you do surgery? If the dislocation is irreducible, if you have associated fracture, or if you are unable to maintain the stability of the elbow. After the immobilization and the early range of motion of the elbow, you will see the patient and you will do follow-up x-rays to check joint congruity and to make sure that the elbow reduction is maintained. How about the terrible triad? How do you treat that? You treat that by close reduction initially then open reduction and internal fixation of the coronoid, if possible, of the radial head, or excise the radial head with radial head arthroplasty if the radial head is unreconstructible. In addition to that, you will do lateral ulnar collateral ligament repair. Never excise the radial head alone in this situation. How about elbow dislocation with olecranon fracture? You will need to do open reduction and plate fixation. A KOR's and tension band is not strong enough to hold the fracture and stabilize the elbow at the same time. How about elbow dislocation and radial head 
fracture. You will do fixation or replacement of the radial head. Never do excision of the radial head alone in this situation. Another important topic is the lateral ulnar collateral ligament, LUCL. The LUCL is the most important lesion in recurrence or persistence of instability of the elbow following simple elbow dislocation. The injury progress from lateral to medial, the lateral collateral ligament fails first and it avulses proximally at the lateral epicondyle. The MCL fails last. Varus postromedial rotatory instability. In varus postromedial rotatory instability, there is an elbow injury plus the lateral ulnar collateral ligament tear plus coronoid fracture, which involves the medial facet of the coronoid. Then you will go to the chronic dislocation. The treatment is open reduction. Capsular releases with hinge external fixer and early range of motion. How about the complication of elbow dislocation? Loss of terminal extension. Usually for decrease the range of motion of the elbow, you will do static progressive splinting between 6 to 10 weeks. No manipulation of the elbow, which is different than the knee after total knee replacement. When you can do manipulation up till three months, you don't do elbow manipulation. Heterotopic ossification. You will do excision. You remove the myositis and you do excision of the posterior part of the MCL to allow more flexion. To be functional, the range of motion of the elbow should be from 30 to 130 degrees. Some people suggest if the flexion is less than 100, you will do release of the posterior bundle of the MCL in addition to release of the unknown nerve. If you want more flexion of the elbow, excise the posterior part of the MCL. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.